Hi, this is the Benjamin Cerniglia Show, and today we have a very special guest hailing from Canada, Jordan Peterson, and he's going to be talking a lot about a little. So, Jordan, tell me a little bit about how you got to where you are and what it's been like for you these past five years or so. Well, Ben, um, first of all, I just want to thank you for just having, having me on the show. And the way that I began was just um, looking myself in the mirror and not liking the reflection that the mirror was putting back onto me. And I said to myself, self, you need to change. And when I did that, it was like everything just opened. Everything was, was new. It was, it was, it was resolute. It was everything that I wished that it would be. And I just, I, it didn't happen right away though. It took time. It took dedication. It took resolve. And now I'm here and you're here and I've made it through. I mean, you know, you know what we've been through. You know, all the things that I've experienced because you weren't there, but you were sort of there. And now I'm here and you're there and there's nothing else to say, really, really. Well, you know, me being here and you being there, it's all relative, right? So, well, yeah, some, some people say it is. Um, I, I kind of agree. I have to, there's no other choice. There well, is what no do you other think? choice. You're right. There is no other choice. So uh, what other choice could you make? Well, there's actually, I didn't really mean that because there is other choices. But when we're talking about the context of this exact thing, and we're talking about self-perception and self-preservation, it makes, it reminds me of when I was a baby. And I was in, I was in the bathwater. I was there. I was in the dirt. I was in the muck. And someone came along and they tried to pull the plug, but I had parents that cared enough that they wouldn't let them throw the baby out with the bathwater. They could have pulled the plug. They could have turned it and there could have been a swirling sucking sound over my life, but there wasn't. I'm here. I'm right here. And we are so glad you're right here. Because and perpetual voice, bliss perpetual bliss without your presence i don't know who would be standing against a lot of these totalitarian government movements that are trying to tell us what pronouns we can and can't use making it dictatorial law that we must use certain pronouns no matter what we choose and we can't even be offensive anymore as you've said in so many of your words so many it's of absolutely nauseating I mean, I'm, I'm exhausted. I just feel obliviated. I, I, am, I am completely compelled. And as, as you get into that and you start talking about pronouns, I mean, I don't know whether, whether I should move forward with, with the continuum or if I should just change the topic and go right over to everything else that's happening because everything has moved so rapidly. I, it's like a lawnmower. It's just in the grass and, and there's flames like wanting to come out, but they don't because they're hindered. And if we just would remove something, it would let the flames out and we're just waiting. We're waiting in perpetual bliss as we appreciate and depreciate what's going on. I mean, there's media coverage on all sides and no one knows what in the world to do. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, absolutely and completely ridiculous. Yeah, it is quite ridiculous, as you said. And it's very difficult in this social landscape to make heads or tails of what's even going on. It, the, the conversation itself, the lack of dialogue, and the dialogue that is actually in play is quite convoluted to say the least oh it's yeah uh, convoluted yeah that's that's one of the words i would have used convoluted yeah there's nothing else other than um dirty 
um, polluted, um, sinister, all those, all those evils, you know, every evil is, is lumped in like a lump of clay. And, and that clay is just being spread out all over. Uh, we hold it in our hands and some people, some people just choose to hold it close and some people just throw it away. But either way, we just have to guard it. We have to guard it like, like a henchman guarding the castle. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Uh, sorry, that was a little problem with breathing because you know what I've just gotten through. But anyway, um, yeah, there's just, there's just a lot to say there and we're here to say it. So what other questions do you have? Do uh, you wanna talk about the hierarchical structure of, of systematic oppression? Sure, please, uh, detail that more. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So uh, the, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do what I need to do. I'm gonna put this uh, bluntly. Well, first and foremost, I have a, a tire swing in the backyard and uh, bear with me here because it's, it's very big and it's, it, it's burdensome. And, and I'll tell you what happens. There's this rain that comes through and the rain goes inside the tire. And because there's no outlet, there's no, there's no hole in the bottom of my tire. The water gets stuck in there and the kids go to play and it's yuck, muck, muck. And, and I, I don't know what to do except turn it upside down, but then that doesn't even work. So now here I'm stuck with this tire and I have to just basically drill it. I have to put a hole right through the bottom. And when I do, I, I realize something. I realize that, well, I'm a loser. And that's all I have to say. I have to go. Thank you. Bye. Well, this has been another session, a lesson from Dr. Jordan Peterson. Yes, it has. And you better listen to me. You hear that, everybody? Another message, complete, without any questions, from Dr. Peterson. And everything I've said, I know that it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be fruitful because that's how it is. There's an ecumenical duty to reduce the societal suppression of all these truths. And so I'm not going to do any of it. Goodbye. Well, we, we have run out of time. Thank this you is, so yeah, much. thanks. Thanks for pulling the rug out from underneath me. I appreciate that. That's your American. I can tell. You are quite welcome. And I hope that you will come back sometime and we can talk more about the many issues that are at hand in our Western civilization. Yes, and thank you so much for the awkward conversation. You're quite it takes well. a lot of bravery to do that. Well, You've done a good job. A, they say I'm a hero, Dr. Peterson, so yeah, I can yep. understand where you're coming from. Which would make sense, because we're a big sandwich in the sky. Universal sandwich. Mm. Yep. And I like Cheese, sandwiches. Mustard, mayonnaise. I like salt and pepper. I don't. At all. It's bad for you. Why would you do that? Why would you eat something that's bad for you? I, I, I'm confused. I just want to know, like, why is everybody doing stuff that's just so bad for them? Sandwiches? Oh, come on. Salt and pepper? Oh. It's not productive. It's not conducive. We have to move forward from this. We have to. Well, Dr. Peterson, we really have run out of time, so we're gonna we're gonna Speaking sign of off that, here. But I'm gonna go so ask my wife joining us. to get me a sandwich. Honey, hey, uh, can you make me one of those? Yeah. All Thanks, right, babe. ladies and gentlemen, this has been Jordan Peterson, and we will see you next time here at the Ben Cerniglia Show. Ben Cerniglia, thank you so much for having me. You have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.